Hi, my name is Hannah Ward. When I first started this program, I was not sure what kind of leader I was or wanted to be. I thought that a leader was someone that managed a group. I had always had a manager above me and someone above them at any job I've worked at. I just assumed if they held power that they were a leader. So I thought for me to be a leader, I needed to be in one of those positions before I could have anyone listen to my thoughts or opinions on any issue or to even follow into what I believed. That is why I wanted to finish my degree because I thought that I could move up within a company and become a leader um, and have employees follow me if I had that degree and could move into that position. Also because I thought that a manager was a leader, I assumed that most leaders just gave out orders and made sure tasks were completed and that, they, and that was just their sole purpose. I'm glad that I've learned so much about leadership during my organizational leadership applied major coursework. I think that knowing all this information about leadership has helped me grow as a leader and see that different ways that a leader can help their team and get everyone to meet their goals. During the class issues and organizational leadership, I started to learn um, about different leadership theories. I put, I learned about servant leadership and that is a style I believe I most identify with. This is when a leader puts their followers first. They put the needs of the group above their own professional or personal needs. Um, they look at what they need and then they help their team excel in meeting all of the goals that they put together. I also learn about leadership strategy. It is important to have a strategy so that you can keep growing as a leader. Once you're in that position where you have followers and even if you are meeting the goals that you have in place, there's still always room for improvement. And to grow as a leader, you need to continue learning and researching and training to be the best leader that you can be. In data-driven decision-making one and two, I learned that data is the best way to measure how a company is doing. Um, but what we found out was many companies are not asking the right questions or actually tracking and looking at the data they need to, to uh, improve their company. If you look at how you want to improve in the organization and then you start asking the questions that you can learn what kind of data you need to track to answer those questions. So if you start tracking that information that you've decided that you needed to improve, you can then start taking this information, organizing it, and then analyze how the company is doing. Are they excelling? Are they having issues with certain parts of the organization? And then you can start to make goals on where you need to improve um, and where you want your company to move going forward. And that's when you have all this that you can show everyone and make that decision on how the company should move forward. Behavior, Ethics, and Leadership 1 was a very interesting class. We learned about the veil of ignorance, and this is something that I had never heard of and I found very fascinating. It's this idea that you're starting a new society, but you don't know what type of abilities, uh, what skills you'll have, what position in society you'll be in, what sex you'll be, gender, race, nationality, or even individual taste. Then you have to think how you would design the society. Would you want everything to be completely fair for everyone, no matter what gender or race or any of those things are? And, um, and how would you make it fair? It wasn't an, an eye-opening exercise <clears throat> that shows a lot about ethics and how people should be treated. We also learned about the Ford Pinto case study. Uh, this is when Ford decided not to improve their cars and to just save money and in the result many people were injured and killed 
all to save minimal amount of money and to increase their profits just very minimally. Behavior Ethics and Leadership 2 also had an interesting case study. I was able to learn about how Nissan was able to bounce back from losing money every month and not making a lot of sales in the United States <clears throat> to growing their revenue and improving their sales around the globe. They had a lot of issues before Carlos Gozen came in to revamp the way they were operating their company. Uh, he saw that they were using a lot of facilities that weren't being used to their full potential. So they had large places to store cars and they weren't being filled up. And so he closed a lot of those facilities. He also noticed that they were ordering parts from all types of different vendors, little small orders. And he decided to change that into them ordering bulk orders for all the parts they needed to save money. They also were guaranteeing life employment to their employees and people were getting bonuses based on how long they had been with the company versus something that was like merit based and if they were improving in the company, helping with sales or just any kind of betterment to the company, then they were getting bonuses based on that versus just having been at the company for a long time. Leadership Theory 1, we learn about the SWOT analysis. This stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I think this is a great way to look at an organization and learn about where they're doing really well and where they need to make improvements. Uh, first, we I had the company target, and so we I described the company and gave facts, such as where they were located, um, operating budget and how many employees they had in their company. <clears throat> then I went on into looking to their strengths and this is where I was looking at where they were really excelling as a company. Uh, the weaknesses for the company were really about where the company could improve as a whole. Um, opportunities are areas where the company could expand and grow and, and really take up a new part of the market or take risks, make changes. Uh, threats are both internal and external factors that are threatening how well the company runs and any factors out of the company such as uh, competition and places that could steal revenue from the company. Uh, this was all information to look at and consider when making recommendations, which is something that I learned about in Leadership Theory 2. Uh, I made recommendations on how to improve my company's order fulfillment process. Next I worked on my process improvement plan. In this plan, I had to make a chart showing our current process and then measured the metrics to see how efficient the company was currently. After looking at this data, uh, we could then determine where we wanted the company's target metrics to be. By doing this, I could see how well the, the company was operating, then make a goal for where the company would want the company to grow to. And then we would continually track this data. And as the company is improving, these metrics could also reflect that. So we would keep it, as we're improving, we would just keep changing our target metrics so that we could keep meeting these new goals as we go along. Uh, Capstone 1 and 2 were classes that seemed to overview everything that I learned in all of the applied majors. I enjoyed looking back at everything that I learned and being able to see how it flows and works together. Uh, we discussed leadership traits, leadership behavior, and leadership theories. I also had the opportunity to interview two leaders. One was the owner of a company, and the other was a leader in the middle of the company's structure. Um, it was fascinating to hear their different viewpoints and see how being in a different position affected their outlook on leadership. So one being the owner of a company, there's um, a lot more stress on how well your company does 
you everything that happens is going to directly affect the way that you are able to live um, to operate your company and just the total outlook on your leadership you um, everything is directly related to your success versus someone who's in the middle of a company they have employees below them and employees above them so they obviously still have to be successful and meet goals but it's not directly affecting their paycheck necessarily as much as a business owner so seeing how this changes the way that you lead your group um, it was really interesting to see especially having wanting to be both a teacher and a business owner it, I could see both and the way that le some leadership skills would be way more effective and beneficial for both organizations um, as a laser as a leader today I feel I'm uh, confident in looking at what my organization would need for me to excel. I feel that I am more aware of situations and can anticipate any needs my team will need so that I can be able to fix any situations that arise. Um, I feel that I follow the transformational leadership theory because if I see that my um, organization needs certain things for me or my employees need certain things for me I would be willing to mold and to change into what my organization needs and um, so I would I would mold myself for that and I also feel that the servant leadership is something that I lean more towards because I want my employees to feel more valued and like they're part of um, their they're necessary and that I want to help them reach their goals and uh, democratic leadership is something that uh, I want to implement as a leader. I want to hear feedback from everyone that is beneath me. Um, I think that is the best leadership styles for me. Having been in the position where I had no say in the matter in the job that I was in and my most recent position being able to give feedback and opinions and views on what was happening on the day to day. Um, I see that my fellow peers were also really responding well to this type of leadership and I see how well they could grow under this leadership and that's something that I want to keep doing as I become a leader. Um, I want my employees and peers to feel valued and I want to go above and beyond in all the work that they put into the organization following their vision and reaching their own goals. Um, personal goals and within the organization as a team their de and also in their department. Finishing uh, this part of my journey and completing my degree, I'll be able to start my career goals. Um, with this degree, I'll be able to get my alternative certification so that I can teach at an elementary school or possibly a middle school. Um, I would love to teach and ultimately be a principal so I can have a positive impact on all the children's lives and make it better every day. Another goal I have is to start a company with my husband. We are starting a service company for different types of work such as plumbing, electrical, and HVAC work. Um, he'll be able to do all of the manual work while I can help with the finance because I have experience in that. Also booking any kind of jobs or appointments for them. And also after having this degree, I feel like my leadership skills will be better. I'll be able to better handle situations that happen with customers, with employees, and just everything in general with running the business. Um, I would like to continue reading and researching about leadership styles and ways to grow as a leader so that I can keep improving and changing so that I'm able to be the most beneficial to all the people around me and both organizations I plan in being a part of. I think that if you continue to learn every day and apply that information to your life, you'll continue to grow as a leader and will be able to reach all the goals that you set in place for yourself and your organization. 
and um, that is probably the most important part of any organization is being able to meet the goals that are in place and continue with the vision and mission that were put in place and having been in this program I feel like I would be able to do that a lot better than I would have before so thank you